Hello, strangers and friends, and welcome back to the... Hold on. <laughs> Where, when what? are we? What, what episode we? is this? Hello. Episode five? five? What are we? It's kind of I... cold. What are we? What are we? I'm sorry, this is too intense of an, uh, an ask for me right now. I'm not emotionally stable enough to define anything. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, strangers and friends, back to the Strangers Guild live stream. We are back with our adventurers after their duo sessions. Um, you will notice some changes to our setups. Uh, that's because life happens. Yes. And we can go into more information about that later. But people are... <laughs> don't ask. Life, life has happened. <laughs> don't, um, don't ask. That being said, <laughs> we do have... An adventure for our for our group today, uh, but before we get started, I like to give inspiration for those who give recap, and that does stack for a reason unknown to our players. So, if our duos of M and Nortia, and then Yaro and Dianthus would like to say what happened last time, and then we'll get going with today's session. My plans are alive. <laughs> They're they can alive. Talk and help and stuff, and they're magical, and I love them. Your snake talks. What else? Um. Also, uh, not only are your plants are alive, but um, your oh wait, is this this episode? Yeah, but your yeah. water shows me cool shit. <laughs> it does. My water does show you cool shit. Um. Mm. You know what else we found out? Nordia can just rip people from their lives. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> big yikes, big yikes for that. But she's cool, so it's okay. Yeah. You know what? If I was going to get ripped from this reality and pulled into another one, I would love to meet Nordia. She seems like she would say sorry, give me a rock, and then pretend like that makes it all right. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Perry can talk. Perry can talk, Perry too. Perry can talk. Which is also fun, so I've got a little to buddy. We went to Aussies first, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we um, Nordia tried... Uh, emphasis on tried <laughs> <laughs> to uh, use one of her magical figurines, and uh, it did it did uh, make an owl. Uh huh. But she it had did make no control over it. No. <laughs> it did a thing. It was cute though. It, it did, did a thing, thing and it it's cute. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> and then we went to the library. Then we went to the library. We found the scroll of Valia, which you could read. Yes, uh, Nordia could read, but Lady M could not. could not. And the librarian lady told us Nordia had been the only one able to read it in 60 years. Ooh. Love it. Y'all y'all remember Eobard Crane um, was the, the librarian. Um, at Bibliothek is the library. It's a play on words a little bit, but <laughs> it is... It is similar to the uh, Library of Alexandria, right? Ooh. The the bit the big one with like the yeah. collection of yeah. all knowledge, um, but this one did not get burned down yet. yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, that being said, let me see. Make sure we got everything for that little recap. It sounds like we did. You went to the library. It was M Nortia, Donna. And then were Cal and Gunner with you two or with yes. you two? They were with you two. Mm -hmm. And then you left Perry back at the shop? Yes. And then right. gave him a little bit of food. <laughs> a little bit of food. Um, okay. Thank you, guys. Um, you can mark your little point of, of inspiration. Uh, that being said, and this is something I'm realizing, uh, just in case you are new, the names of each of the players are at the bottom. Uh, we have our character name and then the person name and their pronouns. And we also have all their socials down here a little bit. So uh, go give everyone a follow. Check out the content. Uh, more Strangers Guild stuff is coming to you soon. Um, season two at this point is about to start streaming. So that's exciting. Um, but yeah. Yeah, so if you want to see all the stuff, you know, in real time, check out all of our Twitches, TikToks, that sort of thing. Yaro and Dianthus, if I could get a recap from you two as well. We had a well, wonderful time. What didn't happen is an easier question. 
You, with you. Why don't you say me. what you did? No, what you're talking about? I didn't do anything. Do the twit a bit. Um, Yaro, with the new magic stuff, learned that he has some funny little thread magic things and yanked us into like a memory or something of some something uh, that involved them and uh, Coliseum. Yeah, Coliseum. There were some people watching. There was um. I'm locked. Yeah, yeah. Trying to kill Eddie. you, and I was in a cage, and there was some people upstage mm-hmm. watching us fight. You fight. I was. I was in a you little. Were, you were chilling. You were I was there. chilling. You were fine. We Bianca and Death were up there, as well as other people who we don't recognize yet. I'm assuming. Yep. And uh, you saved my ass from being pulled back into my grave, and then Got you we out all... of there. The three of us, Hemlock and us, were yoinked back to the present. And now she's yeah, here. Yeah, didn't mean to take Hemlock with us, but... I'm sensing a pattern between the two duos. <laughs> I think she was having a little nap when we got yeah, back. she was conked out, all tied up. Cal shows up drunk. Cal yep. showed up drunk. Very drunk. I kicked Gunner out. I love I Cal. I don't trust him. So he's not allowed in my house. But Cal recognized Hemlock! Hemlock. Yes, he did, and there's something going on there. Something's but weird. I, we don't know what. I didn't tell him yet that I might have killed her once in a past life. I don't know how to tell him that. It's fine. And then he doesn't he, need to know. He doesn't need to know. But then the next morning, you tried to look at my face, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I don't... Listen. Yeah? I've got no defense there. He's gay. I don't know. Uh, that's fair. <laughs> but then we left We left Hemlock and Emrys at the church for them to rest because we mm-hmm. are like, let's go find the others to see if yep. weird shit happened to them too. Yeah. And we went to the church and I don't, I don't think any, did anything happen in between us getting to the church? The library? Or library, thank you. Yeah. We, we also went to mm-hmm. Ozzy's. Ah, yes. We had a much better time. I will say, did y'all stop by the moon tower? We did! Oh, that's right! Oh, yeah! You stopped by your house! That's right! I did. You helped me organize, and we found some books and stuff that yes, might be helpful. Did. Yes. And that's when we decided to go to the library, because some of the books you can't decipher, I'm pretty sure. But there might be stuff at the library to help Yeah, I think you took... We took, like, one or two yeah. with us or something, but... um. Yes. You got, and then we went to Ozzy's, and you got a cloak of invisibility from him. Yep. And I talked shit to Dinah, who was just having a Uh, conversation outside. I eavesdropped. Yeah, you were trying to eavesdrop. I got caught. It's fine. Um, And after that, she told me to stay out of the way. And I'm not, I'm not cool with that. I don't know what she meant. And I'm, I don't like her. I really don't like her. And you're not going to listen. I'm not going to listen. But it's fine, because we saw our friends, plus a new chick whom we don't recognize, walking into the library. And we're like, all right. Well, there's our friends. Let's go bother Yeah, let's go have a chat. Let's go have a chat. We have a duo at the library with a couple of our old friends, and we have a duo approaching the library. And yeah, I think everyone gets their inspiration there. And if we missed anything... Go check out the YouTube. You know, they're they're long sessions, so so little things will be missed, but the the main chunks are there. As we get going here, though, Yara, can you give me a wisdom saving throw? Jesus Christ! I would love to give you a wisdom saving throw. Off the bat, Caleb, I'm a little scared of you right now. How's a ten sound? <laughs> I will say, as you and Dianthus approach the library, you had just come out of this experience where through these threads that turned into a rope, you had pulled out this tiefling. But you feel this same power as you're walking towards the library. And Yaro, as you you walk 
your passive perception, you know, picks up on the, the normal bustle of the town. However, there's a moment where there's no sound and you turn around and Dianthus is completely still uh. and everyone in Dalvern is completely still. Can you give me a perception check? Yeah. 16. Yaro, you have the bundle of the stuff that you got from Ozzy in your hand and you feel this tug as you turn around every face is unmoving but you feel someone tugging at this cloak that you just got and as it pulls you see these threads similar to uh, a blanket that went through the dryer a couple too many times just these random black threads and you feel this pull as this cloak starts to to imbue with magic and you see probably about 50 yards ahead of you a humanoid figure with a cloak made out of darkness and stars and lightning as you feel the cloak kind of wrap around you and you see these pitch black eyes and just as you think it's about to speak, you feel Dianthus bump into you and you look down and you realize that the invisibility cloak had burned into your skin. Ah. And if you weren't a tiefling, it would have probably caused some fire damage. Right, right. But from here on out, Yaro, whenever you look at your arms or call upon this magic, there's a, a slight glitter or transparency a hologram look whenever you call upon the invisibility invisibility power of the cloak which is cool that's very cool but what's the catch <laughs> you do remember that face and i will say with that perception check the item is not haunted it is not yeah. cursed However, you cannot separate it from yourself, Yaro, as whatever reached out for you in trying to pull you away from that moment in time dissolved the physical essence of the cloak. And if it was not a magic item, he would have been able to pull you through. And this comes to you as everything comes back to life and you feel Dianthus bump into you. What are you doing? I was just uh, thinking. Did I see anything happen in this blip of time? Give me a insight check with disadvantage. Oh, beautiful. Sure thing. <laughs> 16? Oh, wait, no. I gotta do it again. Sure, 9. Yaro can be a bit spotty. <laughs> That's all you see. I would say, was it weird because everything that's happened is weird? Or is it weird because something <laughs> Although, he probably will ask you, like, have you seen any weird people in, like, cloaks around here? No. Okay. Why? Have you? I'm, I'm just, I'm probably tired seeing things. Keep walking gonna keep walking i will say with the books in tow and with this interaction on your mind dianthus the only thing you can really think of that matches that a little bit was the mask yeah. that you found after the battle yeah the cultists and stuff and as players you will know that that's not necessarily the same thing uh -huh. but it does feel connected yes it does he did think of the cultists, but he's purposely not saying anything, because if Yaro is seeing things, I don't want Yaro to panic. Sure. About shit. Sure. Just keep walking, bud. It's fine. But I'm gonna keep my eyes much more open for, like, people around us and stuff. The two of you do get to the library, and you probably have the same kind of formalities of getting in, talking to Eobard Crane, 
Um, but especially this early in the day, uh, it's not going to be very busy. Uh, and you can spot <laughs> the very eclectic group uh, pretty easily. And you all are, for the first time in about a day, in the same space. I'm going to wave at our friends. The like cow's here with them, correct? Correct. Does he look hungover? <laughs> no. Great, I think he was faking it then. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'll follow Yara over to the group, kind of see what they're looking at. Kind of, I'm not going to ask outright yet, but maybe try and vibe check. What are they doing here? <laughs> Also, who's this? I'll ask. Y'all will ask. Like, what are you guys all up to? What you got over there? Oh, perfect, Yaro. I have. I found this. Um, and she uh grabs the scroll and she looks at Yaro and then she looks at Dianthus and then she looks at Donna. This is Donna. And then she hands um uh Yaro the scroll. Do you know anything about this? I will take a look at it. <laughs> Yaro, give me an Arcana check. Fifteen. Fifteen. Fantastic. So, Yaro, on a fifteen, and I will say, Dianthus, it becomes pretty apparent to you as this happens that similar to the last few encounters that y'all have had together, something very different is happening for Yaro than it is for you. Okay. Um, even with your eye coverings, it's hard to look at this scroll however nordia and yara as you pour over it diagrams and runes and i would say both of you are used to looking at scrolls or books any form of literature that is complex but i would say because magic is new to dalvern in this in this moment this is the first time that as you read, the words literally hover off the page. And as you look through rituals and ceremony and and these arcane, it, it's as if you're reading a instruction manual for a light bulb at the same time as a rocket ship. Like everything is interwoven. It's stuff that you don't have enough arcane knowledge to pull from however you do get traces of not just words but instructions uh talking about sacrifices a a ceremony that is referred to as the great exchange there's tellings of gates and portals and misty steps and just different paths it's almost like you're reading a road map um, but there's no label as to what country that this map is in. Um, so you pour over it for a few minutes and I can text you the specific like stats of it later. Um, but for now, basically you get the understanding that this scroll is fey in nature. However, you do pick up hints of celestial and infernal text very interesting i'll i'll read it over and probably relay that um just uh something about some i can't make it all out some of it's confusing but rituals and just a lot of different languages and runes on it it's very complex nortia in your session and in our conversation since then, did you glean anything from it or were you just asking Yaro if they could read it? Nordia was able to read that it was the Great Exchange and um, it kind of explained it a little bit, um, but the main thing she was able to read from the text is that the Great Exchange failed. Mm -hmm. Right. Could I get an insight check from both of the people who were able to glean information from it. Yeah. I'm nervous. <laughs> Me and Dianthus are just staring at each other like... I was gonna, yeah, they're, I want to say they're doing something while these two are pouring over, but I'm gonna wait until 
they have their little snowy buddy session. Oh my god, I got a 13 too. We both got 13s. Okay. <laughs> Matching sled. On a 13, I'm going to tell you what kind of the whole group picks up on. But Dianthus and Lady M, what are you doing okay. in this moment? Well, given that I glanced at the scroll and I was like, damn, I don't like that. And I just looked away. <laughs> Donna's what's gonna catch my attention next, because I don't know her. I know her name because Nordia told me that, but doesn't explain where she came from or why she's with us. So I'm actually like, um, you can't see that I'm looking at you, but like, you can kind of feel it. Like, I'm trying to get a vibe from you if Donna's like, chill or not. Like, are you kind of being held against your will with this woman? <laughs> kind of deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I mean, I think M is, uh, M tried to read the scroll and couldn't, right? Mm -hmm. So now she just needs to leave it to people who are smarter than her. <laughs> and is also, you would definitely be able to tell she's also new to Donna, right? Like, this is yeah. not someone she's familiar with, but there is a level of comfortability okay. um, with Donna. So she's definitely not on guard because Donna's sketchy, right? Got it. Okay. She'll just kind of give you a look back that's like, while they're having study buddy session, I don't know what Donna's doing. I'm going to avoid her on purpose. Go over to you. And just kind of stay next to you. We're in the library, so he's going to talk quiet, yeah. but where did she come from? Uh, the appointed look at Nordia. It is a long story. Um, I think we have time. I think she's not from now. She's from earlier and is hanging out with us now. So it's a long story. Northia is, um, I think, more powerful than I thought. Now, DM, would this be sounding any similar to what the fuck we went through last night? It would sound almost exactly, exactly. the same. I, I thought so. <laughs> yeah, it sounds almost, yeah, pretty much the same scenario. Obviously, it manifested in different ways right. and with different story elements. But yeah, it sounds the same. I think Yaro is more powerful than I had realized. That is exciting. Is it? Is it not? Not when they can't control it. Mm. Well, I think, you know, we both had to learn a lot. We all, we just, we just understood this. I think, I think we need to give them time. I think we should keep an eye on them. I think we should give them time. I get an insight check from M and Dianthus as well. Oh yeah. Do 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 Fifteen. Eleven. So the reason I had you two roll insight and these two roll insight at the same time is I kind of explained that the library isn't super busy, right? Uh Eobard Crane gets kind of distracted looking through other books and you know he peeps in to make sure you're not doing anything crazy. But he's mostly not there. Yaro and Nordia, as you are poring over these documents, none of the party realizes. However, and those of you at home, I sometimes like to have a moment where I narrate what is happening just outside the focus of the group. As the two of you are poring over everything, Gunner actually. Uh, he'd been kind of keeping watch, but he he leans kind of his elbow on a shorter bookshelf, and he watches the words that Nordia speak pick up these golden tendrils. And Yarrow, as you're pouring over it, the, these circles and these gear-like runes surround you. M and Dianthus are too distracted to see this, though. But if they weren't discussing what was going on, they would see that that Dianthus 
the the mark on your chest glows ever so lightly. Great. And um you feel a burn on your fingers and hands. You would also notice that the armor pieces that Donna and Cal wear, Cal's blue uh, scale armor piece. And Donna has this kind of shoulder piece that has a, a light purple tint to it. But as you are pouring over this, and it, it takes, I would say, probably like 30 minutes to an hour just kind of to decipher everything. Um, but your group, unbeknownst to any of you, seem to be pulling on the magic of this great exchange. Not knowing what it means, or necessarily that you're doing it in this moment. But for those of you at home, we would pan away from this group. And you would see a, a soft, feeble hand fingertips press into a parchment as this piece of parchment takes into flame and soot crawls up this person's fingers and with a snap uh the magic is gone uh you've you've stopped pulling on the arcane as much as you are just holding these books but yeah y'all don't necessarily get anything else other than that you do have the books talking about Emerus's condition and some history of Dalvern, and you actually pick up some books that, mechanically speaking, are used to pour over and influence your stats, which we will talk about in and out of character um, later, uh, mostly just to update your, your stat sheets and stuff. Uh, but you do find tomes to increase charisma, intelligence, and wisdom. Um, which y'all can figure out how to use later. But that is something that you did find. I just didn't go into detail in your duo sessions. That being said, yeah, everything kind of dies off and it's just you guys. Uh, Cal doesn't look hungover. He actually looks pretty healthy. Um, Dianthus and Yara wouldn't really know about the garden quite yet. Right. Uh, but some of that helped. Everyone looks a little mentally frazzled. But mechanically, in game, they look pretty good. I feel like if there's nothing left in the library for us after the magic's kind of dying down, I don't know if he was suggested, but me, Icarus, as a player, is suggesting we do go back to M's shop mm -hmm. with whatever information we have gathered and just maybe try and figure out, put our heads together about what we all went through and what might be going on with the information we have. For our bookworms, do we have the literature that you would like? Oui, oui, oui. <laughs> oui. Um, I will say, as we get going, Nordia, can you give me a... Mm, I'll say a perception check. Hell yeah. 19 plus 2, 21. Yeah! yeah. Okay, okay. Let me see something. I will say as the kind of natural, you know, you, you reach the end of your study session, right? It's like, okay, it's time to go. Like, let's, let's get moving. Nordia, you hear, and you would be the only one to hear this, uh, a tap on the glass of the window outside the library. And you see in the corner, you know, it, it's a typ typical three by three window pane. At the bottom corner and on the middle frame, you see your dads poking their head in, uh, waving, um, you know, giving the, they're like, ah. <laughs> um, excuse me one second. Um, and Nordia exits the library. Nordia, as you get outside, you notice pretty easily that the, the ground that they were on was tread pretty packed meaning that they were kind of pacing uh kind of like looking for you uh but if you remember in calling upon them this is pretty close uh this window and like this spot of the sidewalk is pretty close to where you kind of arcanely popped up for them yesterday so they had come <laughs> back here to try to look for you and you kind of get that 
they're like, oh, okay, you're here. That makes sense. Um, and then all of that worry kind of like washes away and then it's overcompensated with being happy to see you. Hello. I cannot explain yesterday, well, earlier, but I, it's nice to see you in the flesh. And we, we, we see that you have some friends in there. Um, yes, yes. I'm so excited. I'm so proud of you, Nortia. It's so good to see you just out and about doing your little thing. <laughs> um, and then you see that your your shorter, more stern father uh, kind of steps forward. It's like, dear, you gave us quite a fright. Next time, if you could, you know, I know that you're dealing with a lot of stories at once. Just a little heads up would be preferred. Yes. I understand. I would love to introduce you to my friends, but um, we are in the middle of following a story right now. Um, and I don't want you to be frightened. And I, I'm doing what I always do. I'm chasing the story. I'm I'm doing what you would do. I'm helping people. I understand, Nortia. Just don't get lost in the pack, okay? I and Nortia looks back through the window at all of her new friends. I don't think they'd let me. Very good. Speaking of um, kind of, you realize that the whole time he had a hand behind his back and he presents this this brown kind of like paper package. Uh, it's a couple inches thick, wide. It feels like a book, but with a couple things stacked on top of it and tied with a piece of uh, of just like hemp rope. So a very simple, just like this is a package. Um and you know you can look through it if you want but basically you would just find that it's a kind of like a go a go bag for you um you know it has a pack uh, a healing potion or two can you give me a investigation check um hell yeah i can <laughs> i said oh okay it is good i saw my intimidation and thought it was my investigation i was like why did i think that was a good number <laughs> um 17 plus 5 22 okay okay Nordia, I will say that as you're looking through this, you get you get the vibe of, you know, this is a pack. But more importantly, you get the feeling that with everything going on, you're, this is the first time your fathers are actually worried. Like, everyone's worried when your daughter or child goes to work, right? But this is a little deeper than that. In the bottom you you realize that the book isn't actually a book you open it and it's one of those like hidden boxes type deals and there is a a necklace that seems to have a lot of monetary value however with your investigation you realize that most of the jewels are magic components and out of character you would realize that one of your fathers has enough magical information to know that this would get you not completely to a revivify spell, but a good amount of diamond in case that was needed. Not that Nordia would know exactly the components of revivify, but yeah. that is kind of the. But she can the tell feel. it like will keep her safe in some sort of way. Right. Right. Um, Nordia looks at it, uh, and she smiles, and then she closes the book, and she puts all of the very nice gifts into her pack. I'll be safe. As safe as the story allows. Thank you. And I know that I'm your little girl, but I... I'm going to make mistakes and I'm going to do good things and I'm going to do bad things. And I hope to come back and I hope that you are proud of whatever I do. 
I suppose that is all I can ask for. And she hugs um, Mikal and like reaches out for <laughs> Brassius. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can see Brassius is giving a lot more of that like puppy energy. Uh, it's the, you know, oh, I'm so excited. You're going off to work doing your thing. Uh, Mikal's giving much more of that. It's like mama bear energy, right? Where it's like, I don't want to let go. But you you feel them stiffen for a moment. As if they're catching something within the group. And then hurriedly, you know, they kind of like drop their arms and turn to Brassius. And the two of them are like, okay, very good, very good. Um, make sure to write if you end up leaving for any reason. I will do you one better. I will come see you myself. Very good, very good. Um, dear? And they kind of link arms and walk back towards your house. I will say, can I get a insight check from the other three people? 19. 22. Yeah, 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 yeah. 14. <laughs> we'll you Yaro is the only one to notice. Oh! <gasps> There's a moment when you're pouring over the books and you look up and you see Donna looking out the window. And you can't you can't pick up any of the audio. You can't pick up any of what is being said. But you do see the moment that Nordia and Mikhail hug. And there's a fleeting moment of disdain on Mikhail's face as he sees Donna. And then they leave. What the fuck? Your dad knows Donna. What the fuck? Why does your dad know Donna? Why does your dad know Donna? Oh my gosh. You said it was Mikhail? What's that? Yes. Mikhail is the more stern, shorter father, yeah. if I am remembering okay. correctly. Yeah. The one who, if anybody's wondering, looks like, uh... oh my god, I forgot how to say his name. It's like uh, floating in my ta Taika Watiti. Watiti. Oh, yeah. hell yeah, yeah, dude. Oh my god. <laughs> My dads are hot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I knew this. <laughs> this could be a good time to take a little bit of a break. Everyone get water. Do that sort of thing. Oh, hey. Long time no see. It's Icarus again. Today, we just had a couple shout outs we wanted to give. The first one being for the person responsible for our theme song, which played at the beginning of the episode and which is playing right now. Emily McAnally is phenomenal. She did an incredible job bringing to life a, a song that really encapsulates the vibes of our campaign. So if you are in need of a custom theme song from anything between your D&D campaign or a video game, please consider checking her out. She's an angel to work with. We worked through Fiverr with her, which you can find her there at Emily McNally 5. That is Emily M-C-N-A-L-L-Y, the number five. We also wanted to shout out Epidemic Sound, which is a subscription service that I use personally in my day-to-day -day job, work life, and for this campaign. All sound effects and musical chords that are not the theme song came from Epidemic Sound. Now, we are not sponsored by them. I simply want to give a shout out and uh, give credit where it was due. There's a ton of music and sound effects available on that site for editors like me, so the atmosphere of these scenes would be a lot more boring without all of those additional little add-ins. All right, that was it. Let's get back to it. And welcome back, strangers and friends. Uh, we just took a little break. Uh, now we're going to keep going with our episode. Um, basically, we were pouring over literature, finding out a couple little implications of people in the group. Um, and I will say, if I could just get a, a group stealth check not that you're necessarily trying to like hide where you're going but just to kind of see what happens that's uh, an 11 11 i don't like that no one else is saying their numbers I don't say what I got. I don't say what I got. me eva oh, together. we uh, put a finger up we can put a finger up okay, three ready? two one one three <laughs> one there's no way there's no way. 
Not to like change the trajectory of the whole game, but we both got that once. I oh can't. My God. I literally can't. This, this is not time. Every time we roll every stuff. time. Every time. This is bad. Um, I rolled I a twenty and an eighteen, go. so. Okay. I will Sorry. say. Who NPCs, okay. right? Okay. That's what I never right? <laughs> Oh no. I will say, your party, you know, oh, the boy. four of you, as well as Cal, Donna, and Gunner, leave the library. You, you know, acknowledge and say goodbye to Evard Crane. You get your books. Um, some of them you have to check out, but most of most of the time with the library here, you can just kind of like come and go with it. It's a it's an island, so you know they'll, they'll come find you. I will say on those very poor stealth checks, this might be the most oblivious <laughs> group of protagonists to a story because, like, literally, this arcane force just kind of like surged through you guys. You're pouring over this stuff. You're not picking up on people being upset. It's just everything is so magical and new and exciting. Yeah. Yep. I'm mad. <laughs> what your party doesn't see. And honestly, the only one who would even get like a semblance of what could be happening is Yarrow. But everyone else is so distracted that you don't really see much of anything. As you're going through different shops and and little alleyways and, you know, just kind of making your way back to the lady's hand. It's as if your group has quickly become, I don't want to say famous, <laughs> but the events that happened at the tavern, it's kind of hard to mistake you guys for anyone else. Really? And as you get to the shop, everything you know normal there uh you don't really notice the the guards or the cultists or the members of the church or the flyers there's so many people that you pass that maybe would have been good to talk to <laughs> <laughs> or Maybe it would have been good to avoid. Oh, God. You go back to the lady's hand. Everything is okay. Seems okay. Um, as you get inside, uh, we'll say for simplicity, D and Artie had had a pretty frazzled day the day before. Uh, today's more chill, Lady M. That being said, I need a nature check from Yarrow and Dianthus. Fifteen. Hmm. Six. <laughs> I'm rolling really great me, today, y'all. <laughs> let me refer to my notes a little bit to check something. Okay. Yeah, hey. yeah. Also, for us, this is new, right? Her shop looks different. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Great. I would say, I would say the, since discovering that my plants are magical and could be helpful. Of course, I would show D and Artie this. And I, I entrusted, of course, the the plants not to hurt D and Artie and like they're cool and help and whatever. So there's probably like tendrils of like ivy vine that's holding a bottle up for D or helping Artie clean up something he dropped or like like things. It, it, it is there's like a slight like glimmer in the air and it, it it's distinctly more magical than the last time we were here, for sure. Would it be obvious to Yara and I as we're walking in that you are controlling the plants, or does it just seem that the plants are alive now? Um, I don't know. I would leave that up to DM's discretion, I suppose. I did I did instruct them, but I don't know if they would respond to me as I, as I walked in or not. That check was partially to gather information. Uh, um, to Yara, <laughs> it it feels reminiscent of your space. Okay. Um, it, 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 it's like, oh, okay, this makes sense. Like, I have my books and my my oh my, my shelves and my doodads and everything. Uh, and Lady M has her poisons and her plants and all that yeah, stuff. these are your doodads. <laughs> these are my doodads. However, as you approach, you know, you kind of make your way through the shop back into the garden to kind of, kind of collect yourselves, figure out, you know, what to do next. Nordia... Gunner, Cal, Donna, Lady M, make your way into the garden. 
Um, and Lady M, the thought occurs to you that these other two had not yet been in the garden, or at least not with the plants all wacky. And Yarrow, you feel ever since the magic has come to you and you pulled on these strings to to get Dianthus's memory and Hemlock and all that stuff had happened, you realize that kind of as you gather information, as you like look around, there's tiny slivers of, of light, of, of simple little, it's almost as if you have this instructional arcane sense when it comes to certain things. Kind of like these plants. As they reach out for you to snarl themselves around your horns or your ears or your throat, um, you are kind of able to naturally weave in and out in a way that isn't apparent to you. Um, as a tiefling, it's not like you have this great sense of, you know, herbology and stuff. But the the plants kind of sway with you. You kind of come through. And if anyone was looking, it would be kind of just, you know, a little bit of, you know, kind of dancing with the plants type of deal. However, uh, Lady M, Nordia, Yaro, you get through the plants. No problem. Dianthus, as you enter the shop, I will say Lady M, you remember that whenever y'all came back, a lot of the potions had gone off, right? Like... Mm -hmm. Certain things had exploded or like produce energy. It's kind of the opposite here. Um, Dianthus, as you walk through the shop, certain potions that are bubbling or sparking with with alchemical energy cool down. Certain vials turn to ice. Um, a you, you know, in, innocently kind of put your hand out to maybe stable yourself or to turn a corner. And it immediately turns to white, almost as if turning to birch. Um, and pieces of the plant start to to fade, almost into ash. And as you get into the garden, I will say, based off of your checks and your rolls so far, you don't all notice Dianthus disappear. As Dianthus, you feel the plants reminiscent to a feeling you've had before. Oh, no. Wrap around your ankles and your wrists and your neck. And if it wasn't for your mask, the thorns would start to pull against your face. As you are once again sunken, almost consumed by the dirt. And Dianthus is not here. I, I would have tried to call out. I probably am like, bitch, help! <laughs> yeah, literally, oh, it's it's your dog! Gone. Did anyone gone. hear anything? <laughs> I didn't hear anything. <laughs> Did I hear something? Did I hear it? I will say on uh, like a natural one followed by a six, um, it's very much y'all kind of enter the space, kind of do 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 do. And you hear, yo! But like, <laughs> nothing discernible, right? It's not. You know, you kind of look around and, you know, in a group of people, sometimes you, you forget about someone, you lose track of someone. It happens. Heads. As you enter the garden, there is something different about the way that the space is behaving. Uh, before M. Nordia, it was, it was a welcoming garden with a pond and it felt almost like a valley. But this time it feels similar to a a spot of forest off of a coastal line the the wind is kind of pushing against the trees and the grass kind of sways and takes form as the wind changes direction the wind picking up and it's it's a it's a heavy gust it doesn't have that like supportive simple feel that it did the last time you were here and lady m you you feel this it's funny because you you feel your your garments kind of like pushing with the wind and stuff, so it's kind of like a little bit of like resistance. Um, but you feel something fall on your shoulder as Perry, kind of trying to find purchase without limbs, is kind of you know tying himself around like your shoulder, or your neck, or something, trying to get like. It's like Sorry, lady, I don't know what's going on. It's it's real. Whoa. 
Um, and you, you feel that if he was a little bit lighter, he would be kind of picked up and kind of, but he's just big enough to where he's able to kind of like, you know, with his little body kind of grip onto you. <laughs> Poor little guy. Um, oh, how, how, uh, stop. And I'll just command the space to cease. Lady M, give me a arcana check. Okay, okay, 18 on the dice. Okay. Plus, fui, 21. Okay, okay. Stop it! <laughs> Cut it out! Nordia and Yaro, right before this exchange happens, um, you two, along with Cal, Gunner, and Donna, kind of find your way into a... It looks kind of like a gopher hole, but big enough for almost like a manhole cover, uh, like you would see in like a bigger city like New York or something. Uh, but like this circular hole with a piece of wood with one simple indentation in it. Lady M, as you say this, you command it to stop. You feel the grass grow a little bit beneath your feet. The, the trees and the plants get a little more sturdy as these forms before were more lily and willow in their interaction with the wind become more oak and pine secure. The leaves are still being berated by this wind. And you realize that that is not what is, it is not the plants that are causing this. However, you do feel almost as if I will say on that arcana check, you realize that an air elemental had been surrounding and running through your space as if they were kind of trapped here. Um, but you do feel that energy go towards this manhole that I described to the others and go through the, the cracks in the manhole as it as it disappears and the wind kind of settles down a little bit. <sighs> straighten my hair out. So it was an elemental that came in here? Correct. D? Um, y yes, um, sorry, and she kind of, you know, she kind of, like, walks through, like, to get back. You know, she's holding, like, a box. Um, yes, lady. Did you let anyone in here while I was gone? My lady, I, I don't really know how to let anyone in here, the, the plants. And you see, even in talking about this, that some of the vines are still barring her from entering the garden. Oh, let D in. Stop it. The, and then they separate. Um, yeah, uh, no one has visited the shop today, and no one has been into the garden, I don't believe. So, yeah, I don't know. It seems to have your effect or energy about it. Um, you and Artie go on break. We're, I need to figure this out. And she'll turn toward the the manhole that appeared. This was not here before. Correct. I will say, if Nordia and Yaro can give me investigation checks. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Good job, team. That <gasps> one. Oh, no. <gasps> Nordia! I got a 12. Oh, what is up with us today, guys? Dice hate us. Bad dice day. I do. I guess Bad so. dice day. Fantastic. Okay, so let me see here. You know, on a nat one, Lady M, I need a a flat roll from you. But because of the nat one, I'm gonna need it with disadvantage. Well, that is just horrible. I rolled a seven twice. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. Nordia, you've... It really is funny. With all this new information and these conversations, everything going on, you've never been this distracted. Like, you're you're looking at the manhole, looking at the plants and everything, and everything's just kind of, like, swirling around you. And I'll say there's a sense of... Not, not dizzy, necessarily, but just kind of, like, sensory overload with everything that's going on. Yaro, you have this moment as you're looking at the manhole, as you remember the coin that Cal gave you. And honestly, you wouldn't have really remembered it if it wasn't glowing a bright gold. 
And I will say, Yaro, if everything wasn't so crazy, um, if your check was a little bit higher, you might have noticed the couple of markings of dried blood around the corner of the door. However, you place a hand on it and, and you feel it glow this gold and the wood turns less physical in nature and looks more arcane as if it's a illusion illusionary magic and i'll say on a nat one nordia you kind of like back up away from it and as you step back your foot catches the back of m's ankle and Lady M, with that seven, Yaro, you see, you know, as you're looking down into the hole, you're kind of inspecting it, and you hear a thud, and you look up, and you see Lady M falling backwards and through the hole. <laughs> and then the door turns solid once again. Oh. Oh. I did not mean to do that. Oh. Oh no. Okay. Um. Um. What do we do? What do we do? That's a great question. Where's. Where's Dianthus? <laughs> They're right here. Wait. They were okay. You behind me. The Did they fall in the. No, we didn't I see don't them think so. Go in the whole either. <laughs> They, um, they got into the shop, Are Cal right? and Gunner and them around? The only person you see is Cal. Uh, as Donna and Gunner have disappeared as well. You, by chance, Cal, um, happen to understand anything that's going on right now? Do you know where they went? Um, you see a bewildered Cal... Um, apologies, I... I believe... Where did he go? And it, you see this moment as as Cal kind of gathers. Okay, Dianthus was taken. M's gone. Donna, Gunner are all gone. And then his eye catches the door. Bollocks. <laughs> well, better now than later, I suppose. And he flips a coin and you think he's about to do the thing where you like flip it and you catch it, but you flip it and Yaro and Nordia, you watch him almost as if he is falling, but he steps forward and bends a complete 90 degrees and walks into the door and disappears. Okay. Uh, he just left us here. That was not helpful at all. <laughs> That doesn't answer any of our oh questions. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. You two oh did not gosh. roll particularly well, so, you know, <laughs> um, that happens. Oh my gosh. Uh, Yaro? Um, yeah, um, did you notice anything that screams, Naughty, you don't open that door and jump right into that hole? I mean, or? it seems, it, you said, I thought that it seemed magical, right? I just couldn't. Mm -hmm concerning part of it okay right. um it just seemed magical there's some something arcane about it but i don't know well logically what exactly this is magical everything that's happened in the past 24 hours has been magical right everything follow me and Nordia opens now. the door and jumps i don't know if we should just <laughs> <right>. okay <laughs> I'm going to need a... Ooh, what am I going to need for this? <laughs> Nordia, if I could get a charisma saving throw. Oh, fuck me. And Yaro, if I could get a dex saving throw for oh, this. Oh, got it. Oof. Don't go oof, no, y'all. What did you get? I got a six. I got a six. I'm proud of us. I'm proud of all of us. We're doing great the today, guys. really fucking hate us today. Yay. <laughs> You know, Nordia, I'm going to say for the sake of flavor and to entertain the will of the dice, you know, you're you're thinking, OK, I'll, I'll open the door, I'll follow, you know, whatever. And it's kind of like a, you know, all of this in 
in action, right? In D&D combat, like in actions, like six seconds. All of this happens stupid fast, right? Like you step back, Lady M falls. You're like, oh no, you look up, you see Cal step in. You're like, what's going on? And you turn to get Yaro's attention and you're, I would say if you're wearing something on your wrist or like your hand catches, but there's a moment where you think to to jump in and you grab hold of Yaro, not with intention, but in, oh my gosh, I'm falling type of energy. And uh, Nordia and Yaro, you fall through the door in the same way. The charisma throw though, Nordia, was to keep your, it's interesting to explain because outside of knowing the way that this passage works, that this door, that this path, um, Nordia, you don't understand what's happening, but Yaro, you feel, as, as you feel that you're falling, you feel this uncharacteristic strength come out of Nordia as she starts running through these tunnels and you are just ragdolled kind of like holding on but like pulled behind her as Nordia spends the next few minutes just darting through these tunnels where you can't see anything um I, I will ask do either of you have dark vision I think That's so such a great yeah I think Tifa does. Too. no I do not <laughs> So Yaro, if you were driving, maybe this would go a little bit more directed. Um, however, y'all spend the next few moments being driven and pulled by a blind person <laughs> through this cavern. That being said, we come back to Dianthus. As I said, you felt these, these vines and the soil pull you in. I'm going to need a charisma saving throw from you, but at disadvantage. Kick me while I'm down. Absolutely. And I, I am saying disadvantage for the fact that this is reminiscent of maybe your least favorite memory. memory. Yeah. 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 Four minus one's a three. Yay! Yay! Dianthus. Similar to your moment in the Colosseum fighting in front of Yarrow, you feel your body move with this aggressive instinct as the light around you glows with a cold gray. You feel your blade in your hand as outside of your own accord, you start mowing down these, at this point, roots mm -hmm. and dirt and at, at certain points, Dianthus, if you were controlling yourself completely, you would feel the point when your blade slices through granite and you you find your way. For Nordia and Yarrow, this tunnel is crazy and winding, but it isn't physically holding them, right? They're just kind of in a dark place. But Dianthus you spend the time that they're investigating the garden and talking to Perry and all this stuff, just fighting the very earth as you, you come out and there's this, it's not underground lake, like the way that your, your home underneath Maldeo is, but it is an underground cavern with a, a soft soil on the bottom relatively high ceiling but as the the first bit of torch light comes to your focus you see a man with tousled brown hair dried blood across his face and down his arms uh he isn't wearing a shirt um but he has these simple like studded leather armored pants his eyes glow a deep maroon as Dianthus, your blade makes purchase with a similar blade to yours, not too different in design. However, where yours is more steely and reeks of infernal and necrotic energies, all you can smell is iron as this blade itself seems to be crafted 
from what would appear to be the blood of the man in front of you. Oh, fuck. Tianthus, it is just you against this blade in front of the man in front of you. Oh, fuck. All right, well, vibe check. What's his deal? Is he, like, hostile, like, trying to kill me right now? Does he look just as lost and confused? Like, I don't want to kill this guy if he also just, like, was yanked down a hole. Dianthus, based off of your checks and your current mental state, correct? you can't necessarily gain any, like, trustfulness off of this person. Oh, cool. However... There's a feeling behind your ears, in your bones, right behind your eyes. That tells you this person would be more than ready if you did try to kill them. And as you make eye contact with him, you see someone who is tempting you. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, okay. All right. Given the mental state they're in, fuck it, we ball. I'll, I'll take a swing. I think. Give me an attack roll. All right, baller. <sighs> fuck off. Nineteen. Dianthus, you step forward and you expect this man to, like, you know, in his position to move at all, and you you lash out and you feel your blade make purchase in his neck. And then you feel him as as a river of blood starts to fall down his chest. That was a good first hit. Let's make this fun. Oh, God. Oh, fuck. And Dianthus, you feel a hand reach out and, like, semi-crush your windpipe. You realize that the two of you are roughly the same size. Um, and you take two bludgeoning damage as his fingers just fall in and he throws you back to the wall that you came in at and Lady M you walk in to this cavern just as Dianthus hits the wall Um, you hear the blade fall and you feel this bloodied sword right up to your neck <gasps> what are you doing here who the fuck <laughs> are you <sighs> uh, this is going to be fun gods as you see these golem like not quite knights they don't have like pure humanoid form but it's as if someone did crude designs of what a knight would look like as these four or five figures kind of come out uh you do see in the the second layer the second level of this cavern there's a few people looking in but he doesn't answer you are the guards coming at me not yet uh they're just kind of poised around the space. And he just walked away. He's still there. He's just not engaged with you. Like, he's still in the space. But he's... Is he facing me, though? At this point, he's kind of, like, rubbing his wrists and kind of, like, shaking himself off. He's he's not facing you, uh, but you can tell he's giving that sense of, like, like, I'll turn my back to you. I don't care. Dreadfully sorry, I'm gonna say out to the the whole space, uh, to the people who are watching too. I just fell down a hole, and you are a big bloodied man who is hurting my friend who also fell down this hole. How long have you lived in a hole under my house? <laughs> ah! Give me an insight check. <laughs> I will make you pay rent. <laughs> How long have you lived in a hall under my, my house? house. Uh, okay, 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 okay. 18. 18. I will say, Lady M, as you say this, you get this feeling of not not shame, but like 
you know when you ask a question and you immediately know it's the wrong question or that you already know the answer lady m you would realize that and i would say this is mostly because your background that Uh it is not quite as early in the day as it was when you first got to this space like when you got back to the garden Mm -hmm. um and just in in the way that your body is feeling after being you know pushed into into here um you wandered for a while uh you and perry just kind of you know talking that sort of thing (laughs) but it is it is about an hour before nightfall oh you also gather that this space is not underneath your house. It's probably oh. very far, actually. But no one responds to you. Oh, look at Dianthus. Words are not exchanged between us. But <laughs> we just we make, understand each other. We know what's going on here. Um, we know what's going on here. Oddly, and he's facing away from me. Uh, yeah. I would equate it to like a dog. He's waiting for the call. He's waiting for M to give the okay for him to go again. Because he's not diplomatic. He's not going to ask questions like she is. So Mm -hmm. he's waiting for her okay to go at this guy again. Love it. I love it. Um, M is going to then um, just kind of, he's facing away from her give a shrug she tried to talk it out and he clearly doesn't want to talk so neither does M um so she's going to um say to Perry um I did my hair darling and uh kind of um throw her hand down and is going to cast a shatter at this guy and since he's facing away from me does that mean he's not do i i don't know how that works if i get like advantage or if he has to roll at disadvantage if you're casting shatter at him i'm gonna say this is going to be the surprise round love it um and you'll cast it as normal but you'll get it in the surprise round and then i'm gonna need everyone to roll initiative um as i explain what happens with the rest of the group i adore how m for the second time now has began initiative for us. Listen, she'll always try and talk first, but true. you only get a couple sentences before hands start throwing. So. That's right. Oh. I will need a save from him. And this is wisdom? Uh, good question. Shatter is a con save. Oh, boo, he probably has really high constitution. So what does a 27 do? I quit the game. That's ah! what a 27 does. He takes half. I half hate this. Right. <laughs> Even if he well, succeeds, he takes half? He still takes half. Yeah. yeah, he still takes half. Okay. How much damage is that? 3d8. Yeah, and... Fuck him up. Fuck him up. I hate this bitch. Jesus Christ. An 8, a 7, and a 6. <laughs> So that's what? Don't ask me. I don't know. 21 divided by 2, 10? 10. That's just about as good as I could have done yeah. when he saved from it, so I'm not upset. If I could have each of you roll initiative, so... I will say that Lady M just took the surprise turn. Yeah. Dianthus is going to get an action before the proper initiative starts, uh, but all four of you are going to get an initiative here. So let me know what you get. I got a 13. I got a nine. So my dice that I'm using have a fun little icon instead of a 20 on it, but I'm sending it in for the rolls. <gasps> Yay! Let's go. Yeah, 20, okay. I also got a 13. Wow, wow, wow. Um, whose dex is higher between you two? Not me, probably. I have a 14. My dex is 17. <laughs> okay. So, M. Um, okay, cool. You said an at 20? Yeah, so plus one, 21, technically. Okay. Work. Work. Zehan did not roll well. Good. 
So that's good. Fun. Good. Good. Uh, okay, let's see. Um, hmm. Hmm. Unnamed. Um, yeah, keep mumbling. <laughs> what did, what character is that? <laughs> I've never <Okay>. met before. <laughs> Nordia, you and Yaro get into the second level of this cavern. You walk in and you see M and Dianthus and this unknown person. And you feel a sense of worry but not from what's happening your your worry comes from the fact that you bump into a familiar person as you look up and behind the 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 metal helmet you see two foggy eyes as gunner blocks you from interfering in what's going on down there Gunna? Gunna? No expression. I'm going to need you to move. Make a persuasion check with disadvantage. Oh, uh, I hate when you say oh, the word yeah. disadvantage. <laughs> okay. Um... I was an eight cell. <laughs> oh. Fantastic. Yaro, you pretty simply uh, and pretty easily spot in this space that y'all are surrounded by a bunch of people, right? But something about the energy doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like bloodthirsty or malicious necessarily. It feels like y'all are here. It, it's almost like a practice. Like this has the, the sense of you're being played with by this group. And Yaro, I'll say you kind of catch that at the corner, uh, kind of at the edge of the other side of where Dianthus and M are. There is a small gnome woman uh, kind of holding this spell as as a misty kind of fog ensnares her hands. And if only because of the way that your arcane foci presents itself, you can see the movements in her hands respond to the movements that Gunner makes. Ah, uh, okay. As you get the feeling that he is being charmed in mm -hmm. this moment. I think noticing that um, he'll immediately lean over to Noridia. I think it's a charm spell, and he kind of nods towards where the gnomish woman is. <sighs> Yaro, do you know anything about breaking charm? Um, I know, but I did give it a try. I would say to both of you, um, and I won't have you roll for it because I know there's like a mechanical reason, but as far as like story-wise goes, it comes to you that you either need to break her focus or down one of the two. However, while that is happening, Dianthus, uh, Zehan kind of steps up to you. He grabs the, the collar of your shirt or like the top of your armor and pulls you up with surprising strength for how small both of you are. Um, you now kind of lifts you up. Someone told me that you bring death. I think it's time for you to prove it. You don't want me to do that. Take us back. I haven't taken you anywhere. You want to get back to wherever the fuck you came from? Prove you're worthy. All of you. And he makes quick eye contact with M, Nordia, Yaro, Donna, Cal. Even Perry for a second. And we got a headbutt him. 
close enough. Okay. I will say we are now in combat. Um, so this will be your first action. Okay. Um, give me a attack roll. That is technically an unarmed strike, so... 22. All right, that hits. Cool. Okay. I think it's just a flat three bludgeoning. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. I will say... Dianthus, you headbutt and you feel the the bridge of his nose split open as the others you back up and you see that Dianthus's mask has the same color. However, your face has blood all down your mouth. And I'm going to say for flavor purposes, since it's kind of like the surprise combat, um, he is holding you. Um, do you want to try to get off of him, or are you going to use your? Are you going to keep attacking? Well, has the shatter already happened? It, it's about to, it's about to. Uh, because okay. because your it's your turn in the surprise round. Then it's right. going to be M's, and then it's going to be the shatter. I think what I'll do next is, with my sword, I want to still do damage, but I kind of want to move him or kick him back a little bit so that he's in the range of wherever she's going to put the shatter. Okay, I'll say since you're trying to like get back from him a little bit, I'll, I'll use the role you just did and have it your headbutt kind of disorients a little bit. He kind of drops you and takes a step back. You're still mechanically, you're still in the same zone, right? So like you know, opportunity attacks and all that. But he is a couple feet back, right? As he kind of collects himself. However, he doesn't seem bothered by the blood that's now kind of like running down his face. As you see the shatter hit and he takes it and you for a moment the the energy it seems to kind of like suspend his hair and like he seems to move but he kind of shakes it off and he makes eye contact with you M. no no let's make this a fair fight as combat starts you see Zehan in this space uh, Nordia, you see Gunner not touching you, but kind of like start to shepherd you into the area downstairs or down into the cavern. Um, you see three people with hoods on, so you don't know who they are or what their natural abilities are. Uh, however, you do spot one of them as the sorcerer gnome that Yaro spotted. And then there are two golems on the other side. We have Dianthus, Yaro, Nordia, M, Cal, Donna, and Perry. So, have fun. It's going to be Dianthus, followed by Gunner, followed by M, an in initiative. Okay, this, yeah, this will fuck him up. I'd like to try and hit him with a uh, ray of enfeeblement. Oh, okay. Yeah. I would love to hit him with that. It's a second level spell, so he needs to succeed... Or no, I have to roll to hit. That is not the best. 15. 15 does not hit. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. Okay. Dianthus, you, you see the shatter hit. And as you try to follow up with a spell of your own, the blood on his face and his hands goes in reverse. Kind of seeps back into his face as his nose is fixed. Um, and he's a little more clean than he was before. Um, kind of like cracks his neck. He's like, all right, now it's my turn. Oh God, oh God. Nortia, is a 17 hit. Yes. You feel a, a smack of the blade as Gunner swings his sword and knocks you prone and into the arena. Oh. Four. Eight points of slashing damage. And he just kind of steps towards you. Lady M, what do you do? M is going to, upon seeing um, the, the mist magic from Dianthus and the fall of Nordia, is going to see if she can kind of like catch this is flavor, this is just flavor. Catch the... Um, uh, what does your raven people meant look like, Dianthus? It, well, great question. <laughs> it is 
it's a black beam of energy that kind of just springs from my fingers towards the creature in range. So that just kind of love it. Missed him entirely. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm going to I'm going to try and like draw that energy toward me like that black beam and then I'm going to like gather it in my hands and break it into three green glowing uh it looks like fire almost kind of like fairy fire and I'm going to shoot one at Zehan, one at the sorcerer and one at one of the other people in the cloaks and cast bane on the three of them. Yo. Okay. Let's okay. See if I can oh. see if I can bane them. Yes, fuck these yes, guys. Fuck these guys. It Bane is a Christmas is save. Christmas save. Okay. So you said the sorcerer. I'm gonna make it okay, so Bane. Bane. Um and Bane, it's what what does that do for uh this level? Bane is um uh whenever a target fails this saving throw, makes an attack roll or a saving throw before the spell ends, the target must roll a d4 and subtract the number gotcha. rolled. Gotcha. D4 minus. Okay, cool. Cool. Um, I will say, yeah, so you, it does hit actually all three. Um, yeah. As, yeah. as this energy, it breaks off. Like, it hits Zehan and he shrugs it off. Uh, but again, he's very arrogant, right? So you, you get a piece of each of these three, have your fire, your bane hits. Would you like to move or do anything else in your turn? Uh I'm gonna go over to where I see Nordia. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Bestie. I will say, uh, do you have a bonus action? That I want to do? Mm. Yes, I do. I'm gonna make eye contact with Dianthus. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. I'm gonna make eye contact with Dianthus. Um, and I'm gonna say, let's have some fun, shall we? <laughs> Mimicking what Zehan just said, cause fuck that, guy. fuck that guy. And I'm gonna bardically inspire hey! you. Yo, nice. thank you. Because I'm a bard. Yeah. I believe that is Nordia's turn now. Is Lady M all the way to Nordia, or is she just heading there? Like, did she make it to her side? I have 30 feet of movement, so uh, yes. Yeah. 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 Nordia is going to... Um, is Getting up from prone is an action, correct? I, I will say because it, I did it more as a flavor thing. Um, okay. Normally it would be, but because the attack that was put doesn't necessarily knock you prone, I'm okay. gonna say that you weren't necessarily, like it didn't take your action. Okay, that cool. Makes sense. Um, Nordia kind of like grabs onto M's arm and lifts herself up and looks at Gunnar and says, to think, I was gonna say, I trust you not to hurt me. And then she's going to go and um, she wants to grab the sword and try and take it from him ooh, ooh. that he just slashed her with. Ooh. Okay. Um, you know, give me an arcana check. I'd love to. <laughs> the one thing I'm good at right now. I love to hear it. How is a 22? Yeah! <laughs> there it is. Yeah! Yarrow, you spot in seeing the, the magic from from this hooded person to Gunner, you actually see this magic effect re reverberate with a a white and gold energy as Nordia, your arcane ability breaks through the charm for a second and you see the emotion on Gunner's face as he is trying to hold his blade back. You, you see that he's actually... His arm is actually dislocated as you, as in knowing his strength, you are watching him fight with his body. And you kind of pull at the blade and you feel his grip loosen as, as it completely falls to the ground and his arm completely out of socket falls to his side. And he takes a step back and you, you see that fear in his eyes until he plants that back foot and then it's back to his charmed expression. Okay. Nordia's gonna grab the sword off the ground and kind of like slide it like behind her and away from him. Mm -hmm. um, she's gonna brush the blood off of um, her 
chest where he slashed her. Look at it. Look at him. Don't worry too much, love. Just a flesh wound. And uh, that's how I would like to end my turn. <laughs> give me, give me a strength check. Uh oh. Uh -oh. God. <laughs> oh god. Your turn's not over yet. <laughs> Joey. Um, that's a thirteen. Okay. Okay. Nordia, you you go to pull the the throw the sword back, and you realize you say and do what you meant to do in that moment but as you go to throw it back you actually revolve in a quick 360 as you realize the it's a it's a two-handed blade that gunner just happens to be strong enough to hold with one hand and so nordia you catch the blade and you actually feel it pull you a full 360 and it lands not piercing but like on his chest um, as your turn ends with you just kind of trying to hold the blade up mm -hmm. and this blank expression as he stands in front of you. Oh. Oh. Yaro. As this happens, you oh. see these two, the two closest cloaked figures grab each of your arms ah. and they are going to try to pull you in kind of like a pile driver type wrestling move into the center of the arena. Uh, does an 18 hit. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, so Lady M, you see um, one of these guards is quite a bit shorter than the other. As, as you see uh, the taller one, strong, but like black mechanical arms wrap around Yaro's waist and Yarrow, you feel a a smaller hand around your neck as you are thrown into the dirt. Uh, and you're gonna take six bludgeoning damage. Damn. All right. As this is kind of, you know, to, to have a, like a sports analogy, you're getting tackled like blindsided here. So there's, there's a, a, a feeling of just whiplash as you are mm. immediately just face down in the dirt. Um, Yaro, it is your turn, and I will say, because you were grappled in that sense, you are prone and you are currently being grappled in this moment. Okay. Um, then I think first instinct is he's just, just trying to get out of it, if he can. Um, Give or just me like an, either yeah, a... So, if you would like to use your physical stats, you can do a strength or dex to get out of it or if you want to use your magic give me a roll with your uh casting modifier am i gonna do magic because i have a minus one in strength <laughs> 12. 12. um i will say yaro you feel this hit and you you hit the ground however you feel yourself kind of rewind as the two figures are on the ground with what appears to be you uh, but it, it fades as your physical form kind of flashes back a couple seconds and you are standing r over them, but like right behind them. Um, I'm going to say that took your movement, um, but if you want to use your action or bonus action, you may. Um, is the gnome sorcerer woman within sight? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And does it seem like she's still doing the controlling yes. with the charm spell on Gunner? Next question. Is she within 60 feet of me? I would say so, yeah. Okay. Um, I think focusing on that, just I'm going to try and cast Frostbite on her just to try and get her to break concentration on that. So okay. I would need a con save of 15. Minus a d4 because she's bait. That Ah, that yes. is true. She, oh. did, she did roll a 16, so give me a sec with the d4. Yeah. Okay, yeah, no, she failed. So you actually see Yaro, you you cast and with one hand, she flicks it off. And the, the uh, what does your uh, magic energy look like? Is, is it just frost? Frost, I think it's kind of like these white wispy little wounds of frost. 
as the shards hit, the the ice is deflected, and as the it kind of melts behind, it turns green, and you see this gaseous mist overtake her face, and she is, she drops the charm and is kind of like backing up um, as you see that kind of combined magic effect. And you all see before Nordia, you were the only one who saw Gunner as like weakened or like that his arm was messed up. The rest of y'all just saw him, you know, buff and find in, in that moment. Um, but as the effect drops, uh, you see him clutching at his arm. He actually resets it. Um, and he looks around and he, his eyes fall on the blade. And then he looks to you, Nordia, seeing the paired mark across your chest and just grave dishonor on his face. Yaro, was that the end of your turn? Uh, yeah. Um, I will say, uh, Dianthus, you you feel kind of a bump behind you as, as Cal walks through and just kind of puts a hand on your back, kind of like pushing you forward. Um, he looks at Yaro and is like, good thinking. Uh, you, looking to Nordia, remember, you got this. And you get a d6 for Bardic Inspiration. Yeah. Um, you all hear a wind pick up similar to what was in the garden. Um, but you hear thuds as Donna, in a quick motion with both of her blades, drives through both golems and they turn to dust and you, you see her her armor and her form just both blades in hand just as the rock kind of like falls on her shoulders and falls down um, but they are rubble you see Zehan look to the gnome look back at Yaro Dianthus look to you he steps away and I will say, if you want to attack, you can in this moment uh, as like an opportunity attack. Obviously. <laughs> However, uh, I am going to need you to roll a charisma saving throw oh, when you do so. Okay. All right. So should I do that first or the attack first? Um, give me the attack because you're going to do it either way and then the charisma save. Okay. Um, hello? And you do have a bardic inspiration. I do have a bardic inspiration. Oh, fuck. Okay. 25. For the attack roll? For the attack roll. Okay. And for the charisma save? We're going to find out, aren't we? Seven. Fantastic. Dianthus, um, Zehan turns from you to attack Yaro. Uh-uh. And the others, everyone in the room hears the most metal on metal sound. It, it's like you've heard sword on sword, but you hear this grind as Dianthus, your blade drives completely through the sternum of Zehan. And as dark Icarus blood, <laughs> Icor is <laughs> blood, that's funny, um, falls from the corners of his mouth. Yaro is going to hit you for. Eight slashing and eight necrotic damage. Damn! Eight necrotic. As anyone who looks, you see, Dianthus, your wrist is actually caught, like, just between the ribs of Zehan. Um, as the blade has made way more than purchase, um, but Zehan is still able to reach and with his offhand hits Yaro. Dianthus, the saving throw, though, was to see if you were able to keep your faculties, because this is a moment you've had before, and Dianthus, for this next round of combat, you are not going to have your character's agency. Oh! As the rest of you watch Dianthus disappear and fade into the shadows of the cavern. Um, and what is you, wrong with you? I don't know, King. No clue. Yaro, you see the gnome in front of you snap their fingers, and they are gone. Dianthus, it is your turn in initiative. However, 
between Yaro and Nordia, who has fewer hit points. Oh no. Oh no. Nordia's at 18. Got four left. <laughs> oh, Caleb. Oh no. Caleb, please, Caleb. Yaro. What? <laughs> does a 17 hit? Yeah, 17. <laughs> Everyone who has dark vision in this cavern would see all of the light go out and a skeletal drow form enters the space as Yarrow, the the slash of Zahan hits and you feel that energy kind of like overtake you, but you also feel it in reverse as this form with their fingers kind of pierces your chest and you lose consciousness as you are hit with eight necrotic points of damage as no one sees Dianthus or those of you who see this form don't know that it's Dianthus but something about your domain Dianthus that you don't know about is being born of death you crave it and in this moment as the lights come back you still don't see Dianthus but you do hear Yaro's head hit the dirt eyes lifeless you see Gunner look to you Nordia he looks at Yaro kind of pierces around the room. I I don't know what to do. Tell me what to do. Nordia looks at Gunnar. Go save them. And she looks at Zayan. Nordia, in a... Similar to the time that the dagger was thrown in your room and it pierced the wall, uh, Gunner, with his left hand, his off hand, grabs the blade and he throws it back. And whereas before you saw Dianthus's steel in Zeon's chest, you, you see that that grainy dirt that happens whenever Dianthus, your armor, disappears. You see that falling. And as Zeon turns, the, the flat of the blade hits him in the face but you see this is not exactly a slash as, as it is like Gunner using this blade or this great sword as a projectile as Zehan turns and is immediately stunned and falls to one knee. Yeah. And you, you all see Gunner with his other hand as he picks up his arm, it pops back into place or that feeling after you've dislocated something like it's in place and you get back used to it, his fingers kind of catch Zehan's hair, and he he pulls up and starts to, to hold him in that spot. Lady M, it is your turn. So, M is... I suppose, where is everybody in accordance to me? I see Nordia and Gunner, who is holding Zehan, and I see that Dianthus is... and... <laughs> Uh, who else? Kalandana. Where are Kalandana? Um, Cal was next to Dianthus and Zehan, but he disappeared. Um, oh. Donna's on the other side of the room. You saw that she she took her action to to get behind the golems that were going to attack and, gotcha. di- for lack of a better word, like disengage, uh, break those okay. down. But yeah, so this cavern, it's not super big, right? It's enough to where it's within about 60 to 100 feet uh, as far as like diameter goes, uh, but everyone's in moving distance of each other. Okay, perf, 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 perf. Then I saw Yarrow go down and I can see that I'm moving. So I'm gonna go over to Yarrow um, and I'm gonna kind of roll them onto their, are they on their back? Yes. Lady M, I need you to give me 3d20 rolls. That is a horrible thing to ask for. I don't like that you ask for that for me. So I don't like this one bit. Three flat rolls. Okay. Wait, is it? Do you want them in order? I do. In the the order that you rolled them. Okay. Seven. Okay. 
Six. Oh no. Twelve. <laughs> Not good. Oh. Not good. Lady M, do you have dark vision? Aha, uh -huh, I do. When this happened, you saw this dark shadowy form grab Yarrow. Boom. You didn't you didn't see Dianthus. But I'm gonna say those three rolls were the three steps that it took for you to get to Yarrow. In that first step, you remember this dark shadowed form that you've seen before. It's been a long time, but you've seen this before. In the second step, you look down to Yarrow and instead of a purple face, you see a young girl with ash and burnt fabric over her eyes. And as that third step, you get to Yarrow and you, you feel your hand against their chest. You feel an icy push as Dianthus. Can you give me a wisdom saving throw? You are rotten for this. You are rotten <laughs> to your fucking core for this. 14? Lady M, you feel a a punch to your chest. Damn. As Dianthus, you feel yourself come to back in that space. Your armor is gone. Sexy. Um the ground around you is swallowing the light and completely pitch black. Lady M, you're going to take five uh, bludgeoning damage as Dianthus being quite a bit stronger than you is going to not knowing what they had done, punch you away from Yarrow and Dianthus, on your next turn, you are actually holding Yarrow uh, before your hand was actually buried in their chest. Um, but now there is a a handprint as your cold death energy rests on their chest. <laughs> uh, do I have any memory what? of what I just did? Do I know what I just did at all? No. Great. Wonderful. Lady M, um, I'm gonna say just that I'm being a little mean, um, but also that is a story moment. Um, that's gonna be your movement. Um, if you would like to make an action, you can. Do I see Dianthus? Yes. <laughs> I don't think I wanna make an action. I think okay. M is stewing. <laughs> <laughs> in her little head and is just watching the scene play out in front of her and trying to make sense of what she thinks she just saw and just watching. Um, Nordia is next in initiative. What would you like to do in this moment? Nordia didn't see any of that, right? Right. Um, with Zahan taking a knee as he should. Um, <laughs> period. Nordia's, um, gonna walk up to him how is he looking right now pretty rough i will say uh part of it is he's he's in a headlock from gunner so okay can i can i tell that this like this test like he wouldn't let himself actually die or like can i tell that uh give me an insight check it is a 14 sound. <laughs> Nordia, for the first time, you realize that the torches in this room aren't emanating fire. Um, getting a proper look at it, similar to Lady M's garden that had kind of that, that arcane soothing feeling to it. The You thought that the color in here was based off of the maybe the minerals and the dirt or something like that. Um, but the torches are actually bubbling liquid. And based off of what you had seen, you could presume that it is blood on fire oh. as these runes are around the room. 
And Nordia, as you kind of make purchase, kind of looking around, uh, you see, even though he is losing air in this very moment, uh, Zehan kind of smirks as he's like, I figured it out. Don't underestimate us. And Nordia flips the end of the dagger that Gunnar gave her and bashes it down on his head to try and knock him prone. Nordia, as you bring the dagger down to bash through, you feel a a flash and you see his hand clamp down on the blade side of the dagger as his form turns a marbled red and then melts into the dirt. Oh. As the gnome leaves, the hooded figure that had tackled Yaro clicks their arm and it glows like a fiery red and they are gone as well. And I will say, based off of your check, you do see the smallest cloaked figure start to run. And I'm gonna say for flavor, you catch just the profile of Dee's face oh. as she runs out of the cave and then you lose her. Oh. But now it is just the seven of you. You four, Cal, Donna, Gunner. I will tell you, combat is now over. However, Yarrow is down. Um, that being said, Yarrow, can I get a death saving throw. Uh, 10. Okay. Is that good or bad? It passes. That's a pass. That's a pass. It passes? Okay, good, good. All right, y'all. The... I'm going to need what? another death saving throw. Oh, another. Okay. What? 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 <laughs> what? We're doing it right now. I'm so stressed. That was a six. Okay. I'm going to need one more. Oh, my God. Why? Oh my Why? God. What do you mean? I'm going to fail. Oh, God. Okay. Okay, that one was good. That was a 15. Okay. 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 Dianthus, Hi. you have your hand on Yaro's chest. Uh-huh. You see their eyes open, kind of flutter for a second, and then they close. They open again, and they are deep, black, empty. Uh And then they close. And you feel their heartbeat start to slow. What do you do? Given I don't know what just happened or how I fucking got here, is it very obvious they're dying? Like, uh, yeah, no. Yep. No, you are seeing death's eyes in their face. Absolutely not, King. Absolutely not. I am going... I'm going to cast Spare the Dying, and I'm going to tell death directly. Absolutely not. <laughs> Give me an intimidation check. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. 18. Amazing. There's a flash of shadow as Yarrow and Dianthus disappear for a moment. Dianthus, you feel your hand push into them and the, the earth kind of turns to to jello as you push through and you see three separate sets of hands as a familiar face you see Bianca pulling on Yaro, and behind them, you see a. It looks almost like a bird bath, but a amethyst and obsidian panel, where a model of yourself sits. And Dianthus, you would recognize, even though you didn't see it when it happened, the skeletal drow form that you took when you attacked Yaro. What the fuck? And when you make your intimidation check, you see Bianca kind of cower for a second. As, as Bianca cowers, 
you do in your periphery see as before death chained and held to the surface of Obus. Is there anything you would like to say, Titus? I mean, if it feels like willingly or not, they are, are trying to take Yarrow, it's almost like a beg. Death, be my friend. You see the panel I referred to, Pulse, and these three deathly forms look to it, and they they rush towards death as you see this intense silver energy blast, and the three of them turn to smoke as he looks to you, and as he has before, very somber eyes. I'm fighting. I don't know how long I can. And then it's gone. And you are back in the cave, holding Yarrow. And there's stable. Correct. I got it, okay. Um, okay, cool. Can I, uh, can, uh, can I cast Cure Wounds as well, just to get him up again? Yeah, yeah, and I'll say... Combat's over. They're all kind of gone. Okay. As you use cure wounds, uh, how much does that help? Three. <laughs> you get three hit points back. I will take it. <laughs> Dianthus, you cast cure wounds. Yarrow, you are awake. You are back. You you are a little weak. Um, but what do you do? I think um, just taking in a deep shuddering breath and just looking at Dianthus, I assume can put the pieces together that he's the one who brought him back. Um, I think he's just going to reach up and pull you into a hug and say, um, thank you for not letting me die yet. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. He is very stiff. No one hugs him. This is weird to him. No mm-hmm. one hugs him, so he doesn't know what to do with his hands. They're kind of up a little bit, like not touching you. And he's just gonna let you, I guess, cling to him until you're done with whatever. That yeah. Is. I don't think it'll be too long. Just, just enough to feel like a, like a quick little squeeze until let you go, because he's aware you're not a touchy person. <laughs> so he doesn't want to. I'm curious. M saw stuff how is she doing how is she observing all of this shit well you know i mean m i mean m has been sitting by sitting and watching as yaro's eyes flash four different colors uh (laughs) zehan just melted into blood putty into the floor like (laughs) you just saw death i like m is just like very um She's reeling with her own shit that she saw. I'm. I would say M is not knowing how she can be useful in this moment, which is frustrating to her. In the sense of that, there's not. Uh, we just don't know anything, right? Right. So after Yaro's up, and Gunner and and uh, Nordia are covered in blood putty. <laughs> <laughs> um. She stands up and is just kind of gonna brush herself off. Uh, how? Ugh. Is everyone okay? I think so. Are you? I think so. Yaro? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Can I look over at Nordia? Mm-hmm. How are you Nordia? doing? Nordia! After the blood putty went and saw that everybody was helping Yarrow, she's like directly turned to Gunner's shoulder and like checking it and making sure that like he's okay. Um, you see that he's rather bruised, and you know, you, you see that there's whenever you tear a muscle, it gets really gnarly, right? Gunner 
if you didn't realize like the spell effect that was happening you wouldn't know but like he is completely you know like chest sides shoulders arms down his legs like completely bruised and torn but he's okay um you can see like in the the tension in his face it's like a pain that he's experienced before nordia sees that while he's braving the pain and can handle it she still is overwhelmed with the sense of him being in pain um and by instinct does what she remembers like her dad's did when she like would like fall off of a tree or something when she was a little kid and get a bruise or a scratch and she kisses her hand and places it where the bruise is the worst my knowledge nordia doesn't have necessarily healing magic but you do see him kind of stand a little straighter um he takes off his helmet puts it under his arm there's like a little wince i will be good my lady i i need, I need a moment and he just steps back and kind of not fully collapses but just kind of leans into Cal and Donna as they each get an arm and kind of carry him away just to kind of tend to his stuff Nordia like whips around and sees all of her friends um I am okay that's good I'm okay too <laughs> as, as you see Perry um, Lady M as you had like been like casting and stuff he had been kind of like flung out to the side um, and he actually kind of just like slithered up in the grass like, that was mighty scary mm, so sorry I leaned down and have my hand out so you can slither like into my like sleeve so it can be warm and safe I'm sorry I did not know you were you were ah I was so tired are you hurt there's a moment where Perry meets your gaze and there's a a flash across his eyes, Lady M, as he keeps his cheery disposition, but you see the visual of Dianthus's form with his hand in Yaro's chest. I'm good. Everyone's good. Thank you, Perry. I'm what gonna put is him in my that? hair. Oh, right. Um, uh, this is Perry. Looks at the head out. He's um, well, he was a gift from Cal, and you know, he can. He, he, what you've never seen a talking snake before? I mean. Who are you to question what he is? He's just a little guy. We don't know. <laughs> He's fine. He's great. Okay? He's awesome. Say hi, Perry. Say hi. He doesn't he doesn't speak. As Lady M, he crawls back and makes himself unseen. He just gets nervous around new people. Uh, he just sometimes. seems a little sh shy. He's just a little shy guy. Anyway. Where are we? Is anyone there? No. Your glance grabbed me and yanked me through the floor. Then I ended up here. But well, that's where you went. Yeah. Nordia kind of like scurries over to you guys. Um, and she's kind of looking at this dagger that like she just wanted to like blood in somebody to sleep and instead they were like no i'll kill myself <laughs> and she's kind of looking at it and she's a little you can tell she's like a little bit overwhelmed and she says i didn't kill him just so we're clear i did not do that that is not what happened i don't think it was you i think he's some sort of fucked up idiot who is stupid and <laughs> we won and that's all that matters he gave up because he's a loser <laughs> um yes but the torches around they um were blood were 
him, I think. Not 100% sure how it works, but I figured that he wouldn't put us to a test and actually put himself at danger. I'd actually put himself in danger, love, what are you? <laughs> <laughs> you can oh, change your face, what are you? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. I figured, come on, naughty at Thornwood. <laughs> I, I figured he wouldn't actually put himself in any danger, so um, I thought I'd knock him out. And he said, oh, I'll knock myself out, die. Um, but, uh, uh, it seems like everyone ran off, and um, uh, Latium, I am going to tell you something. You know the people with the hoods? Mm hmm. Did you know that D was one of them? <laughs> I'm not telling a joke. Nortia. I need you to tell me that it was a joke and that D was not down here with the blood guy and in the... There were people watching us in the Colosseum. There was some little magic person who was controlled. Yes. I mean... And D was here and was attacking us. D? <laughs> Just to <laughs> yell out into the cavern. Where, which, which way did they... She does not respond. As everything calms down a little bit, Yaro, you start to feel better. Each of you feel in your hand what feels almost like chocolate. As you look down at the melting red coin, similar to the ones Cal gave you, as each of you, independent of each other, in however your character would flavor it, the liquid hits the soil and a path emerges and the paths are a little different. In the start of next session, we're going to talk a little bit about what those do, uh, but you're going to come to a new place and learn a bunch of new stuff. But for now, for today, I'm going to say that each of you step forward into the next step in your journey. And that's where we're going to end tonight's session. Each of these players and I will talk about some of the items and the books and the things that they got today. And uh, yeah, I do think too that that deserves a level up. Nice. So we'll we'll talk stats and HP and stuff and we'll, we'll meet back um, at the start of next episode. And for those of you at home, you won't want to miss that. It's going to be uh, a little bit of a spoiler. It's going to be a little bit of a training episode, and you'll see why. Uh, but I'm excited for that. Um, if you have any questions, players, as always, we'll talk after this call. Um, but that's going to be it for tonight's stream. Mm -hmm.